That's the number two money man. All right, it's Scott Campbell, the desert dweller. <laughs> Here to teach you how to paint windows. Oh, I gotta move this camera a little. It's like it's hitting the pole or something. Anyway, yeah, I'm doing the money man. This character I do a lot. He's holding the money, you know, he's so happy. He's great savings. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've got a, I don't know if this is a coal race pencil or what I got happening, but it doesn't really matter. Number two Ticonderoga or a Palomino 602 Blackwing pencil or just about anything will do. Because it's just a sketch, it's it's not, you know, it's not going to be a finished piece of art, it's just used as a tool to refer to when you're painting the window. And uh, as, you, as you've seen in the past, a lot of times, you know, on these big jobs and stuff, I wouldn't do any sketches, I would just attack the window. And a lot of it's just from memory, how to draw certain things that I do over and over. But uh, in these videos where I'm doing character design uh, lessons, I'm going to always sketch them out and try to, I'm not going to try to match them exactly on the window, but, you know, get it pretty close. Anyway, I'm just sketching it out here, and uh, it's a pretty, pretty popular character. There's a lot of versions of him, too. I do a snowman, too, who holds money, and he says, save some cold, hard cash. <laughs> I know, really corny, but that's how I roll. <laughs> Anyway, and you can have any character holding money. You can have, I've had the sun, you know, like summer sale with the, the sun holding money. It could be a woman, it could be any kind of character at all. But in this case, I'm just doing your basic generic man. And uh, so it's coming along here. And uh, this is lesson two, and there's gonna be a lot more new lessons also. I'm excited about all the other stuff. I'm also going to do some uh, some alphabets too, or letters, like uh, showing how I do some of my different fonts and things that I've created over the years. But uh, this probably won't be actual lessons, so I might skip a lesson, like a character design lesson one week, and then just do an alphabet or something, because I know everybody's into lettering these days. There's so many people on uh, Instagram that are just incredible sign writers like Derek McDonald <laughs> from Golden West Sign Arts <laughs> I should put in a little video of him. I, I shot a lot of footage of him I went to Reno and visited with him and Tina his partner and uh, he's got some really really cool stuff but one of these days I'll get around to making a video but actually I do want to start working on a book a new book and I don't want to mention it yet, but because you never know, I may not get it done in time. But I'm working on a new ebook or sketchbook ebook. This part here, the hand, it kind of looks like an olive. You just make a circular thing and then put your money fitting like in the olive, and then it comes out the bottom too here. And then you do your thumb, and your fingers, four fingers wrapped around it. did all this talking I didn't really talk about the sketch but you get the idea just watching me sketch it what I'm doing it doesn't need explanation it's pretty self-explanatory I usually put his, the sleeves on the shirts rolled up I don't know I think it just looks cool so there's our guy I'm just kind of beefing up some of the lines just so when I go to hang it on the wall for reference I can see it see it clearly and again you know I may change the face or I'll probably keep the I'll keep the hand positions and stuff but I'll definitely uh, probably keep a pretty close expression Yay! here I'm just doing a, a face and uh, I sped this one up. No, actually both of these were in real time. I just, sometimes I draw really fast, especially when I'm doing faces. And you've seen those, if you go on Instagram, you've seen the one minute sketches. I'm doing the typical 
big mouth like, hey, save some money. <laughs> the cleft chin. I don't think I'm gonna make his chin that big when I paint it on the window. I'll probably make his chin smaller like in the other drawing. I like showing that three quarters view a lot when I when I draw and stuff. I think it really communicates. And you could do lots and lots of sketches, like reference stuff. People do it all the time, artists. So next I'm gonna wash off the old window. And it's funny, the stuff in the middle, this was kind of a cheaper white paint, you can tell, because it just like started coming off. And like, its belly and the eyes and stuff, the white of those were already, they didn't even hold up. The other paint is Sherwin-Williams. I managed to get, get my hands on some. So here's my little drawings. I'm gonna post them on the side, just as reference. Blackness. <laughs> and this is in real time too. And I'm kind of looking over at the sketch, sort of getting an idea of the position of everything. Now I'm not really happy with the lighting and stuff. This is in the sh shade on the other side of the house, but you can see in the background to the to the right a little. It's really really uh, bright and stuff. So I guess my camera has to compensate or something for it. But here I'm going in and you can see I did make the chin shorter. I probably make it a little bit longer. And it's just like sketching on the paper. Sometimes it's even faster on the window. And uh, if I want to change it up again, I can just, you know, paint right over stuff. I'm doing the mouth and the bottom of the mouth. I didn't exaggerate his mouth as much as on the um, the original sketch. I think I made his face a little bit shorter, but you see I go in and raise the eyes up a little because I didn't like the position. I just paint over him. The main thing is when you're done with this first layout, that it's um, somewhat close to what you want to do and you don't even have to follow this either exactly you can change it up as you go along like when you start adding you know the flesh tones and stuff you can you can alter it a little I probably should have did this at uh, faster speed And again, yeah, the camera I'm, the camera angle is kind of weird. And I think in the following, the pictures that are coming up, though, I do get like closer in and stuff. This is the GoPro, and it's kind of a skewed look. And again, I'm not happy with the contrast and stuff. I need to get some better equipment. I, should, I mean, it's a camcorder. It's, you know, it's okay, but... or at least change this lighting. I'm try I'll have to figure out. I don't know if I brought lights out, if that would help, or... I guess I could plug in some lights or hook up some lights out there. If I did it in the direct sunlight, it would be too washed out. So, here I'm doing his hand with his thumbs up, you know, like a, like this deal. But I hope you guys are enjoying the, the lessons. You know, this is fun for me because I get a chance to just do one character instead of a whole splash. It makes it, it makes it nice and I can get more, you know, more into the, to the artwork and stuff and the process. I mean, I have videos that are like that too. But then a lot of times I speed them up like 10 times and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and 
here I am doing the the money popping up. And this is my my second video, so I'm still. You can see on the table there. I'm still, you know, right below here. If you look down, <laughs> you'll see my table. That's the same table I used in Portland. But I'm just collecting things, and like I got a sprayer, and and right now I only have one foam brush. Remember how many foam brushes I had? I had like 60 of them. But right now I have one, and I just keep washing it when I do every color. Which is fine, really. But yeah, I'm gonna have to go online and order me some uh, poly brushes. Poly brush brand foam, foam brushes. They're the best. Okay, now I finally sped it up a little. And I'm just going in and doing the second coat really quick. The paint dries fast today, for sure. Dries super fast. Okay, now I'm gonna get ready and do the, uh, the Caucasian flesh tone and this is just I mix this up myself it's basically white and red and yellow so it's kind of like if you take orange and add white to it you probably end up with this color too and he's blinking that's why he only has one eye ball I'm going in and doing his hand and I just paint the hands in completely and I'll put the the thumbnail in afterwards. When I the same color I use for the highlight of the face is the same color as the thumbnail. And this green was a little bit too dark. So because it was dark like that, I didn't put in a like a shadow green. I just put in a highlight green, but as you'll see when I come up it looks really cool. It really looks Disney esque. It just has a flavor of Disney, the way the thick and thin lines flow and stuff. And even though it doesn't have the dark outline, I mean not the dark outline, it doesn't have the dark shadow green, it still looks pretty cool. But we'll come back to that after I do the shadow on the, the flesh tone, the face and the hand. And I, I go in and do two coats of green, so you can see I've done two coats of green there already. I didn't show it, but I did that. Now I'm going in, I've got like a small brush, it's like a little, I don't know what I would call it, it's not really a script liner, but it's a small pointed brush. I used to get them at Utrecht and they worked so good, but they discontinued them. But you can also use the MAC 162, the small brush, and kind of turn it on end and get some really cool thick and thin lines too. But when I'm doing big windows and when I was doing commercial stuff really fast, a lot of times you saw me, I would just use a one inch foam or a two inch foam brush and turn it on end and just whip through these characters. But because I got one character, I can concentrate on it for you guys and show you, I decided to go in with more clean lines, take my time and do more thick and thin shadow lines. And it gives it a, gives it a crisp sort of 30s, 40s sort of feel, cartoon, like the way they used to do it. Like when they did the animation, the hand, hand done animation. I enjoy it more when I'm using the smaller brushes for the um, highlights and shadows instead of the um, the big thick you know one and two inch foam if they work too I mean watch my videos you'll see especially if you're new to the channel like just go and watch them and you'll see me just really hauling ass with those things these these are a little bit a little bit slower but the lines are just really more varied and it gives it more character And basically you do the same thing with the black. You do the thick and thin lines and it gives it a lot of flavor. Now I'm doing the same thing with the hand. And sometimes I just outline the whole thing. I'm really just outlining it. It's like it's supposed to be a shadow, but it's kind of like a double outline. I do this first and then I go ahead and do the black outline too. And if this color was a little bit darker, you could just leave it like that and give it a more softer look. You know, it's not as high contrast like with the black, but 
it looks good because this is basically what Disney did like if you think of films like Sleeping Beauty and stuff they had most of the women were the, the they did the outlining and stuff because they have delicate hands and they're smaller and they could they just they had more of a knack for it like uh, Walt Disney would make a lot of the the women were better at doing this kind of stuff but I'm pretty good at it too <laughs> It feels good to use this type of brush for these lines. And you're just you're just hitting it basically where the light's coming down, shining down on it. It's sort of a really simple highlight. It gives it a little bit more verve. It looks nice. And in this one I I do the thumbnail with the same color. I blocked it there because I'm right in the front of it. <laughs> but you get the idea. And then the same thing on the fingers, I just do the highlights. Went over it a little bit. This looks like white almost, but it's actually the, the flesh tone with a little bit of white in it. See, the lighting is so weird. I probably shouldn't have wore a white shirt, but look at my arm. It's like dark, dark, dark brownish red. I mean, I do have a tan, but you know, the coloring's wonky, but I gotta figure out how to get better lighting. Because I'm in the shade here, so that's part of the, part of the problem. Here I'm just using my splashy color from Sherwin-Williams and I added white to it and it works pretty good and it, all this paint dries about 20% darker, 15-20% darker and here I'm going back to this is real time see what I'm doing because when I do it in real time it's easier to follow it but then I do speed it up later too there's some stuff that a lot of stuff coming up where I speed it up like but when I'm doing the black I think I do it in real time because I know that's pretty important Here I'm using the MAC brush, the 162, it's three quarter inch maybe, or something similar to it. I have like three different brush sizes I use and I'm jumping around. I like this cartoon style, it's, I guess it's more like animated 40s. It's almost like, what's that guy's name? Fleischer Studios and UPA Studios. Well, the UPA Studios is more stylized. That's like Mr. Magoo. And this is more like kind of Disney 30s, 30s and 40s, more of a Disney style. But in animation, a lot of times this would be done. They wouldn't do the black outline. It would keep it soft like this. It gives it a more, a less graphic look. It's a more uh, natural, natural looking uh, outlines and stuff. And you'll see that when I, I don't, did I, I don't know if I did the money yet. <laughs> I think I did do the money, the highlight on the money, but we'll see. This spot I totally, 
must be doing his hair, but I think I do. Oh, I painted his hair blue. And I didn't get that on camera. Oh, there it is. I painted his hair in blue in that last segment. But this part really looks Disney-esque. I mean, these thick and thin lines are just, they're beautiful. It just gives it that feel. And I think the colors, too, are really, they're real Disney colors. That highlight color just came out really good. But you can see, like, on the side, I kind of make it thinner, and then on the top of the money, I make it thicker, even though it tapers off into the corners. It's thicker in the middle. It's thick and thin, but it's still heavier on top and then thinner on the sides. And that just gives it, gives it a feel. It's like he's squeezing the money. <laughs> like usually I do, well I have a video on how to paint money and stuff. And it's different than this. The green is lighter and then I put in a dark shadow, and then I put in a highlight, and then I trap everything with black, and I put in the dollar signs. But here I did it different. I just kept it dark green, and then I, uh, the money and stuff, and all the, the little kind of details on the money, I put, I used, uh, I used the same green, that lime green. I wouldn't say it was exactly lime green, but it's close to it. Like here I'm just kind of winging it, putting in dollar signs and little details. And but usually I do that in the black. But when you do it this way, again, it looks more kind of organic. It doesn't look as graphic. But then I do outline the money in black too with thin lines. But I don't put the details in black because I've already done them here in the, in the light green. All this stuff you just have to practice, practice. You can come up with your own kind of designs and own shortcuts too, but I hope these videos are going to help these on doing characters. Because I want to do everything, cats, dogs, aliens, zombies, just all kinds of crazy characters. And even though I've done a lot of characters, sea characters and aquatic stuff too, it uh, it's good. These videos will be good because it shows more detail of what I'm doing with a specific character. So I did the blue, and sometimes I'll do the black and then I do the highlights with a brush. But here I'm doing it in reverse. I'm just using the blue that I already painted and then I paint around it. And uh, I'm kind of dry brushing. Well, you'll see when I pull my hand away. I'm sort of dry brushing the, you know, coming up and it gives it a cool look. It really looks like little highlights. Damn, I wish the camera was better. <laughs> we'll see if we can fix that next week or if anybody has any suggestions. I mean, I paint it outside on buildings, and sometimes it looks, the camera looks really good, the lighting's good, and stuff. But then sometimes there'd be like a shadow halfway down, or be weird. Usually when it's overcast, it comes out good. But here in Nevada, it's, it's really, really sunny. But then I am in the shade, so. I love pulling those black lines. You've seen me do that a million times. If you've been around, if you're not new to the channel. But yeah, I hope you guys like these. They do take a while to put together. But then I do have time since I am retired. It's nice. It's really nice not having to deal with all the stuff I've been doing for 42 years. I mean, at the same time, I love painting windows, interacting with people and stuff, but 
you know, I've done so many windows and it's been so many years. It's nice to be able to do this where I can just like sit down one-on-one -on -one with you and kind of do some lessons. And you guys can ask me anything you want. If you have questions, I'll try to do my best to answer them. So it's kind of crazy I painted all that blue just to have this little bit of blue. <laughs> but it just, I think it looks really cool. It's kind of a cool way to do it. It's, it's reversed. There, I kind of tweaked his jaw a little to give it a little bit of realism. I mean, it's definitely cartoony, but it, it gives it a little bit more lifelike appeal. He's winking, <laughs> like, I got the money, I got the money. <laughs> it felt weird to not paint for so long. You know, now that I'm painting again, it's, it doesn't take long to get back into the groove. And again, like on the last video with the, the rattlesnake, to do a cartoon rattler you know it's the face that is everything it's the expression I mean it's the pose too and but the expression of the face is the main it's the main thing I'm not the best character designer but I uh, I work at it there's some that are so incredible because they have such a skill of anatomy too and I'm not as good with anatomy. I'm, I think on, on a scale from zero to 10, I'm probably about a four or five when it comes to anatomy. I mean, with these characters I'm familiar with, it's, you know, it's just doing it over and over and over. But yeah, sometimes I'm not real good with anatomy. I have to work at it. But then with faces, I'm pretty good always just been into faces since I was a little kid you know I probably should have been practicing other things like drawing human and animal anatomy you know getting that down but I'm gonna be 64 and I'm just beginning to learn that stuff I'm taking a class right now I mean I stopped working on the lessons but it's it's like 20 over 20 lessons for like 40 bucks or something 40 or 50 bucks from Aaron Blaze a character design course and He's so good. He's a Disney uh, animation director and just really good. And another one that I really, I really love is, uh, she goes by Vixie Arts, V-I-X-I-E-A-R-T-S. And her name is Hedvig, H-E-D-V-I-G. And she's just incredible. She's like a, been into Disney since she was a little girl so good and she's so young and she's just she creates the most incredibly cool and cute characters really appealing and really believable but so I follow her and I copy her work and then I taking the class from Aaron Blaze too so he's starting to look pretty good and here I just sped it up I decided you know I'm just doing the black outline on the clothing so I decided to spin it up. I think this is sped up like three times. We're almost done. Almost done in the Nevada sun. <laughs> yeah, you step about six feet from there, it's about 90 degrees in the sun. And it's a really nice, probably 80 to 85 right here. It's comfortable. And believe that paint it dries fast. Once we get our house and I get a studio set up, I probably will put this window actually in the building, and then I can paint on the inside. Or actually, I probably still paint on the outside, but I might be painting in the sun, and maybe I'll build a shade over it or something like this. But I don't know what's with the coloring. It's just it just doesn't feel right to me. 
But I think the main thing is you get the idea. Anyway, hey, thanks for hanging out with me. And this was uh, Lesson 2, Penny Money Man. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Good job.